Which is better to use? You no, know, twisted pair cable or a fiber optic cable? Yes, give me one reason. I can't hear you. So if we want to add more machines onto the, the network, twisted pair would be better, easier to add more machines. Any other reason why you might prefer a twisted pair over fiber optic or vice versa? Mm, they're cheaper. They're cheaper. Twisted pair are cheaper, right? Is that correct? Which one is cheaper, twisted pair or fiber optic cable? Is it actually cheaper? It's not. Which one? The fiber one. The fiber one. I don't know. He said twisted pair. Now you're saying uh, fiber optic. Which one is cheaper? Uh, is it cheaper price? What? The twisted pair. Twisted pair. What do you think? Which one is cheaper? Guys. <laughs> Okay, be careful about the cost. Sometimes it's cheaper to buy one meter of twisted pair than a uh, cable. But for your work, for the work that you need to do, if we need to transfer data from here down to the like 200 meters, not too far, or even if we need to transfer three kilometers, you need so many repeaters for twisted pair. You don't need them for fiber optic. But what's more important, if the amount of data is very, very large, like in terabytes, then one fiber optic cable can transfer at that rate, but you might need a thousand twisted pair cables to do the same job. So sometimes it works out more expensive. So don't make a straight answer all the time that this one is cheaper, either one of them. It can be different costs depending on what you're trying to do. It's not always how much is a meter of that cable, because there's so many, so much differences between them in bandwidth, attenuation, and in other properties. Yeah. Actually, you said that this pair is for and our is fiber which which means that they can only send and then and then no just send in one direction yeah you need two wires okay. to send in one and receive in the other you can't send or receive simultaneously yeah okay uh, or even every now and again manually you don't change it to the same wire it doesn't work so one fiber optic cable is fixed in one direction only and the other is in the opposite direction that's a disadvantage but Right, okay, so be careful with the cost. Twisted pair is not necessarily cheaper. Or else you have to explain that it's cheaper to buy if you only want, you're interested in the length of one meter. But it can work out a lot more expensive if you, cho if you choose twisted pair. Because it, the quantity of data it can carry, the bandwidth is very small compared to fiber optic cable. And also the life, uh, expectancy <laughs> depending on the environment. Okay, any other reason why you might prefer twisted pair or fiber optic cable? Okay. What? Attenuation? What's that? What's attenuation? You say the attenuation. <laughs> The length of the cable? No. What? Yeah. What, what's the attenuation? Attenuation is the weakness of a signal over distance. How much is the distance that a, a signal can travel in fiber optic or twisted pair before it becomes unrecognizable? Which one had the longer attenuation? Longer distance. Fiber. Fiber. 
If your fiber has can go travel longer distance, the signal in the fiber optics don't sound very sure. <laughs> yes, you're right, but you don't sound very sure. Okay, um, what's wrong with satellites? Give me one problem with the satellite that you might say, guys, let's not use a satellite for this reason. What reason? Uh, it's very expensive. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> if you want to transmit uh, to Paris yeah. tomorrow or next week or next year, I probably satellite would be cheaper. Be careful with the cost. <laughs> Any idea of what's all with the satellite? Or you might have an issue, anybody? Yeah, uh, electromagnetic interference due to storm. It can, yes, the signal coming from a satellite, we receive an electromagnetic signal, so radio transmission. That's an electromagnetic signal that can be interfered with if there is storm up in the sky, electric storm. You agree with that? Good. Now give me another reason. Satellites may be not be a great option. Yeah? Well, here's my time. Pardon? The setup time. Lifetime. Oh, lifetime of the satellite. So if we had an option of a fiber optic or a satellite, if we install a fiber optic, it probably will outlast a satellite. Okay. Um, quite located away from the surface of Earth. The communication satellite. Any idea? 35,365 kilometers. Right? Right? Yes. Anybody knows how far the satellite is? 36,000. Yeah? 356. Or maybe 375. Yeah. 375. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Even if it was miles. No, okay. No, you were you're saying 360,000 kilometers. Yes. Yeah. But then your slide said 36,000 kilometers. 36,000. Yeah. Because it's around 36,000. Yeah. It's 36,000. 36,000. Yeah. It's 36,000. Yeah. 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 Okay. I right. was saying 365. I was just testing you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's 36. Uh, 36. 750. 36,750 kilometers. So that's, and that's one of the problems, that causes one of the problems that satellites have. Go. <laughs> satellites are so far. Does that cause any problem in transmission? What's the problem that's caused to satellites that makes them maybe not too suitable? The delay, I would say. The delay. The delay. How, how long is the delay? One quarter of a second delay. So a signal travels up 36,000 kilometers and back 36,000 kilometers. A total of 72,000 kilometers, give or take. If you check the speed of light, per second, and check this distance, it, you'll find that it will take quarter, one quarter, 0.24 of a second. So all satellite transmission has 0.24 of a second delay. Like you send a signal or you say something, it goes up into satellite, come back again, quarter of a second late. Most of the time it doesn't matter, but some systems, to some systems it matters, and you need to, to take that into consideration. Mm. Have two options. Mm. I don't know which one to go for. We go for You know, you've already done that as well, or I expect that you already know that. So it should be a quick, easy sail through, hopefully.
or we'll, we'll go with satellite with the error detections, right? Guys, we'll be covering, we'll do error detection, which I hope you already know, and then next week we'll do the error correction algorithm. Maybe we'll have a quick touch on it today. But in communications, working. Normally, you send a lot of packets. And you develop every now and again a bit with an error, a bit, and you need to discover this bit, a bit or more. But transmission equipment are getting so, becoming so good now that the, the errors are a few and far between. So, but if we discover a frame with some bit somewhere or a packet with some error, we do not, or we cannot so far define which bit. So we cannot fix it. The receiver cannot fix that. So they just discard the packet or retransmission. Then we ask the sender to send it. So for now, and for most networks, in fact, almost all networks, now the only way to fix errors is to retransmit the packet again or the frame. So we, we, we look and we study how to fix it, the, fi the error correction algorithms, but they're not really used, not in, in any kind of meaningful or big way, because it's not an efficient way yet. So hopefully one of you will come up with some efficient way of correcting errors. <coughs> and then instead of, if we get a packet and we know there is an error and we know which bit all you have to do is change it from one to zero or zero to one, and that's it. We don't have to retransmit it again. So we can save a reasonable amount of time in data communication. Now I'm gonna look at the error detection systems. From the first system that was there, which is bit, it's called parity bit. Parity bit error detection systems. So, this is the oldest system, and this is the most commonly used system still in networks and in systems and in files. It's, it's almost in every data storage and data communication. Parity bit is used. Not because it's a great system. It tried, you know, they, they, it's better to get rid of it, but it costs so much to get rid of. So sometimes, just remember always technology, we don't always go with the best. Sometimes you have to come with that's not the best because of cost wise. It costs, they reckon, too much to get rid of this parity system, remove it of all systems. I know, how does it work? It's still in use today. It's probably in your machine, in your hard disk. Every time you save a file, it does a parity kind of detection on it, or, and then every time you want to copy it, it checks it first. It, it happens in the background. Sometimes you might get a message saying, error then that means there is a bit somewhere in your file your file is no longer good one bit was moved or changed or more than a bit so how does it work it's first there are a few different few kind of system there seven bits and they add a parity or eight bits and add a parity bit we just take one example and we we use it for this time so imagine if you have the number of bits in a message and you want to send them. So we look at, you know, a group of bits and you want to transfer. Now the sender has to insert some bits and the receiver has to check those bits and remove them. So now you have, we have a user data, but we have to insert data that's not part of the user data. So the way it works, and this is where there might be two or three different ways, but what the way we'll use Every seven bits we count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we'll use those bits and we'll insert one extra bit, bit with them to make it a byte. And we'll, the sender will always insert a one or a zero. 
in there. So we'll add in a one or a zero after the seventh bit. And then we count another seven bit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we'll insert another bit. And if there was another seven bits and so on, we'll do the same thing. And another bit is inser inserted there. So this operation is done by the sender and it's called bit stuffing. So the sender performs this operation known as bit stuffing. So how does it, what value will it insert, a zero or a one? Now, it depends. The sender and the receiver, there are two techniques. One is called the odd parity, and one is called the even parity. And the receiver must agree, are we gonna be using odd parity or even parity? If, okay, you'll pick one of them. Which one would you prefer, odd or even? Right, even. So we're going to be using the even parity, a sender and a receiver. Now the sender must make sure that every eight bits have an even number of the value one. So let's count the first one. One, two, three, four, five ones. That's odd. We must insert another bit. So that bit has to be a one. So to make sure now we have six bits, which is an even number. Now the next byte. One, two, three, four, five. So that's a bad example. But now we, we need to add another bit to make sure it's, it has an even number. And the last, the last byte as well, one, two, three. That's an odd number of ones in this byte. So we'll insert another byte or another bit of the value one. So now we, now we have four. And every byte sent or stored must have an even number of ones with it. Now the receiver receives, the data is sent through the network. It could be the neighboring, goes to the neighbor, or it goes the other side of the world. The receiver that's working with this sender receives it in count to see are there any, you know, and they all, they must all have an even number of ones. So, and check them, and if they all have correct number of ones, the receiver will count the first byte, say one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect, that's even, get ready. Then count the next byte, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, perfect, get rid of the parity bit. The next one, the next one, the last byte, one, two, three, four, that's even, get rid of the parity bit, and that's your received. If one of the bits changed, the receiver will know. we will count and say, oh, there are five bits here or, or seven. It's an odd number and therefore it won't work. Another example, just a quick one example here. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, four six, seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, is that a, it's a very simple system, right? <clears throat> okay, we're still going to be, but this is the data we're going to send, it's just handier to put it one on top of the other in this column. Now you're going to help me, you're the sender, and you're going to send this data. We're going to have even parity, so we're going to add a parity bit at the end here. Tell me what parity bits shall we add in there? Um, what bit will go in there? One. One, yeah. Why? So the total of ones in this byte is an even number, that's two. Right, the next one, a zero, because it already has two bits. That has the value one. And the last one, a zero. a zero, because it has four. So then already now, when we send it there, here, there are two bits here, and there are four bits, and they're all even. Now, as a receiver, imagine we got an error somewhere, right? Don't look at the screen for a second. Now, you're a receiver. Tell me where is the, if there is an error. Where is that error? Look at this. He finds two bits here. I'm gonna get rid of these. Finds two bits. Is this good byte or a bad byte? Yeah. You are a receiver and we are working on an even parity and you receive this message. The first byte has two value ones. 
it, that's good. Okay, why is it good? Because it has an even number of ones. That's good. Keep going. Where is the arrow? Uh, the, second. And the second byte? It has one. That's an odd number. And therefore, you say there's an error and discard the whole message. So it's so simple. And what makes it even simple, it's the speed it works at. Because it doesn't count. It actually does an OR operation or XOR operation on the bit. Start with the first one, ANDing or XORing, it does it and leaves the result at the end. And that would be the parity bit. Computers are so fast at logical operations. So anytime you're going to check an algorithm, is it fast or not? If you find it does logical operations, it's, all, it's tremendous speed. If it does division and adding and multiplication and all that, it's a very slow. This is one of the fastest algorithms there. It performs an AND or an OR to find out which one it is. Operation that leaves the, the last bit as it is. And just send that. And the receiver does the same thing. Just um, a logical operation and compares the last one. <clears throat> so that's how it, right. Anybody can see anything wrong that could be wrong? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Anybody else can see anything that can go wrong or is wrong with this system? Did you do error detection before? Yes. Did you do error parity? Have you seen this before? No. No? Right. Any, anything wrong with this system? How efficient is it? Any idea? Okay, I was expecting that everybody knows this. I'm wasting my time here. Right. You want to tell us what's wrong with this system? If uh, two bits of different values flip at the same time. Exactly. So now, if if two bits flip in the same byte, it has to be in the same byte. Look at this. Those two bits here, I'm going to underline them here. I'm going to flip those. Forget about, by the way, I, I switched that one. Imagine I'm going to just leave it like that now. Back to even. Now everything is even. Right? The top one has two, the bottom, the second byte has a zero. Standard, I'm fixing it this way. Zero is considered an even number. And the last one has four bits. So two, zero, and four, they're all even. The sender puts the bytes in this format and send them. Imagine if those two bits flipped. <coughs> now the receiver receives those, this message. The top byte has two. It says perfect, there's not, nothing wrong. The next one, zero number of ones, that's also even. The third one says one, two. Two is an even number, that's great, there's nothing wrong. And there are actually two bits that have a mistake. So that's what's wrong with this system. It does not discover all errors. Anybody can generalize the statement, what else it cannot discover from what I just explained? Can you put it in words? What else cannot be discovered using this system? Come on, I can't hear you. Right here. It's not a seven-year focus, but you might hear Go on. Can you put this in English words? Why the system doesn't work? What's wrong with it? When I made these two bits, it didn't work. Now, it's, it's in the exam paper. If you put the mistake, you get positioning. Positioning. Position? You mean only bits in the second and third position can have a problem, but fourth and fifth may not have a problem? No. Okay. Anybody else can tell me what what are the situations where this system really will fail to discover an error? If you get more than one, so if I get three, it will not discover them. Okay, so it'll be even. So even number. Now we are now we are cooking. So even number. If you get two bits or four bits or six bits or eight bits flip, they will not be discovered. If one bit or three or five or seven, we'll discover it. Okay, if, it, if two bits flip, as in this case, we did not discover it. Even if this one and that one flip, 
which are two ones, we would not discover it because it will always count an even number. So the receiver says, oh, count. And remember, not just an even number, that's not good enough. If that bit and this bit flip, will they be discovered? Even though I'm after changing two bits, that's an even number. But if we change this to a zero and this one to one, the zero will, be, will count this way and say, oh, that's a zero. Is only one. That's odd. We discovered. So not any two bits. Anybody can put it in more accurate statement. What errors we cannot discover? Any even number of errors per byte? Any per even byte. number of bits in one single byte? We would not discover. Like if we have one here and one there, and that's irrelevant. If you get two bits, one in different bytes, perfect. But you would not discover any even number of bits that change in the same byte. And it's important to say in the same byte. If you are asked, what errors parity system cannot discover? What would you say? What errors parity system cannot discover? Can it discover three bits, for example? Five bits, seven, one, two, it can only not discover even amounts of bits flipping the same. Perfect. Get full mark for that. If an even number of bits flip in the same byte, don't forget the word in the same byte. So that's parity system. So you're ready. It's the most commonly used system in the world so far. And yet it doesn't really work very well. So as you can see. It only discovers errors one bit or three or five in the same in the same byte, but it still it works reasonably well. The other good thing about it, no, that's not a good thing. Not being able to discover all errors is a problem, but it works extremely fast. That's a good advantage. It has another disadvantage. switching technique and virtual circuits. We talked about anytime you want to send information, reuse that information, you also send redundant information. It is a disadvantage. Ideally, you only want to send the user data. You don't want to send another ton of another you know, data that's, that the receiver will throw away because that will cost you money carrying it and transmitting it. So how much redundant information, and is it much, in this system? Can you tell how, much, how many or how much redundant information in this message, in this three byte question? Redundant information is information that's not part of the user data. That's information added by the system. The parity bits, just those here, this is the redundant data. Is there much redundant system? Or is there a lot or not a lot? What do you think? <coughs> it's a lot of redundant data. Even though it looks like it's only one bit in a byte, but in fact, if you send 7 million bytes they, you'll have to, of user data, you'll have to send 1 million bytes of redundant data. So one in eight is redundant data, and that's a very high percentage. So this is another advantage of parity bit systems. So it has two major problems. Anybody can say them? It does not discover all errors. It does not discover many errors. And the other problem, it has large redundant data. Okay. So the errors, you need to know what errors it does not discover, and the data, or redundant data, you need to know how much, what's the percentage. It's either one in eight in this system, in this example, one in eight of everything you send, is, or one to seven, in ratio one to seven. If you send, if you send seven billion of user data. If you have a file of 7 billion you want to send it, remember you're going to be sending a billion bytes of redundant data that gets delivered all the way and then the receiver has to get rid of it. 
Right, so that's the first system. Yep. Everybody has heard of it, or some people have not heard of this? Okay, it doesn't matter. You've heard of it now, and you need to know about it. You might be asked a question. There'll be one question in the final exam about error detection. Not necessarily parity, but... Right, the next system is an improvement of this parity system. They improved it by using a block a parity block or block parity de um, error detection system. Block parity. And how does it work? We'll, we'll use the same example here. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we added one there. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, and one, three, four, and then a few, few of those. So the sender sent this information. The last three bits here are redundant, are the redundant data. This is up to this point, it's like the standard system, the parity system. But so what we did, we added, or we checked the number of ones in every byte. Now put in the packet one byte on top of the other makes it easier in tabular format like this. So every seven bits we add an, eight, an eighth bit based on the parity. And this system we are using even parity. Now, once you finish that, now you do the same. Right. Put parity bits at the end of every column. What parity bits we put at the first column? We're going to be even. We're looking for even parity. We can have different parity for horizontal and vertical, but we'll stick the same. Now we're going to have what parity bit will go in the first column? Zero. So in order to keep this two, right? What about the next one? So column two, hurry up. Zero. Thank you, zero, because zero is an even number as well. And this one? Yeah. I have a volunteer, guys, come on. I'm waiting, go on. One, What's the one. one? Thank you. One. one. Zero. Zero? zero. Perfect. And this is the parity byte at the very end. So this is how the new system works. Now the receiver receives this message and i'm going to have two errors that normally we would not discover just imagine imagine we flip this one to zero or one to zero and this one to zero we normally we would not discover that error using the old system right how can we discover this error at the receiver end the receiver has to do both count every Byte, horizontal, make sure there's an even number, and also count every column. And if one of them is not right, you'll say, get rid of it. There's something wrong with this. So, so that's even. So everything is okay horizontally. What about vertical? And that one, they'll have only one bit each, which is odd number. And that will be indicate that there is an error. So the block parity system solves the problem of the ordinary parity system at a little extra cost. The extra cost of one extra byte at the very end of every frame. This is known as the block parity. Are there any errors you think that this system cannot discover? Yeah. Did you or someone else say yes? Okay. Said yes, right? Okay, can you see any problem here that cannot be discovered using this block parity system? Anybody on this side? What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, wait, how? <laughs> Why 
Well, give me an example where this error, if it happens, we will not discover it. Which bit shall I change? Column, give me the row number and column number. This is row one, two, three, four. And this is column one, two, three, four. Come on. Which column, which row will I change? Best row. Um, if we change one. There's no row zero. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's another way. I move my finger and turn it into stuff. It doesn't depend. Yeah. This one here. So if I change this one to one. Yeah. Quick, 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 quick. Okay. So I've changed that to one. Yeah. Now we, if we count downward, we count one, two. Yeah, we won't discover it this way. We'll say that's. We say, oh, that's odd. We discovered it. Say again. Both of them, the one beside. Right, so if we change this bit and that bit and this bit and that bit. So this time, if four bits flip, that's the only time we will not discover. It's very unlikely that only those four bits will flip, but it's possible. Now, just to put this in general, because we put that previous one in general statement. Like, if I draw a box or a rectangle or a square, starting at any of the bits, Anyway, here, if I draw a box, the four corners of that box, if they flip, we will not discover it. Here's an example. Let's say we start this one, go there, there, that, that. So that, those four bits, if they flip together, we will not they will not be discovered. And similarly, any four bits that form a kind of <laughs> on this kind of example. So if those two here flip, and those two, you know, the corners of any box. So it's not a perfect system either, but very unlikely only those four bits will flip. For example, that one, that one, this one, and that one. If those four flip, they will not be discovered. And if you do change them all, you count in any direction, you won't see an error. So that's the block parity. It's better, a lot better than the previous one, at much less extra cost. Still costly. Still one in eight of your data is. So the next one is called CRC. This is probably the most commonly properly used in all, you know, networks. CRC error detection system. It's used on either point-to-point -point or end-to-end -end communication. And this is a proper kind of system. CRC, it's called CRC, and stands for cyclic redundancy check. <clears throat> How does it work? First, let's have an act a quick example of how this works. Imagine example in decimal numbers and then we'll do the proper one in binary, the original one. Just so you know what we're trying to do and you'll be able to follow. Right, imagine if we have the data Uh, in any data, let's say six, seven, three, six, seven, three, sixteen. This is our data. Just imagine we are sending those three numbers. And let's imagine you add those two, three numbers together and stick them at the end. And CRC always uses a trailer, an extra redundant data that's sent at the end of a frame. At the end of a frame. So only one or two or three bytes at the end of every frame. A frame can be a thousand bytes or three thousand bytes. You only send two or three bytes at the end of a frame. So CRC has fantastic ratio of small redundant data. 
that's the one good thing about it. But for now, let's just try this number. Imagine if we add all these three together and we put the sum here. That's 16. But 16, <coughs> okay. The sender and the receiver divide by a number. Let's say divide by number. The number is five. Let's say the sender and the receiver agree on some key. We call it a divisor. We agree on a number. And let's say we divide all this number, that's seven plus six plus three, that is, what is it? Uh, 16 divided by five. <laughs> If you divide 16 by 5, the result is 3.1. 1 is the remainder, not, not point 0.1. The 1 is the remainder. So we have. Now the question is, how, how much extra, what do we need to make this number divide into by 5 without any remainder? We're looking for a complement. So it'll take 4 which is five minus one is four. So if we add four to this number here, that's really the solution. This is the, <coughs> this is the code that you sent with your number. So the receiver now receives this frame, including the, this part that's not part of the user data, but this is now, we call this the CRC, or the frame check, the, the, the value that's used to check the frame. They call it the frame check sequence. But the receiver receives it, adds everything, 3, 6 and 7, 13, 16 and 4 is 20. So it divides it by the agreed number 5, it divides without a remainder. It divides it 4, so it says, okay, there's nothing wrong with the data. Imagine if, if this 7 turned into 8, for example, then 6 and 8 and 3 would be, I don't know, 20 and 4 is 21, which again doesn't divide without a remainder. This is the basic idea, but in, in binary it works faster and it works better. So let's see how does it actually work in binary. That still doesn't detect all the errors, right? No, it doesn't Anything discover all, but it discovers a huge, like 99.99 of, of errors. Well, only, if, only if the divisible key that we chose at the beginning is very large. If it's a small number, then let's so let's let's go through this. We'll look at the keys when when we when we before we finish. Just their keys, the keys are recommended by the, the organization to put the standard. They say, Oh, these keys will give you the best results ever. So the keys are already defined. They're not secretive keys that we use. Anyway, let's see how it works. And you need to know how it works. And you'd be given a sequence and say, right, what I see you said at the end of this. And let's take an example, maybe a, with some example here. Let's say this is the data we want to send. And let's say we have the divider, the number that's shared between sender and the receiver is say five, for example, one, zero, one. This is, this is what we have. That's our frame, our user data. And this is the divisor that we're using. So we're going to divide this by this. We get a number, we complement it, and we add it to the data and we send it off. That's the way it works. So, I right, told so maybe I'll, I'll, I'll write the steps here. This, the steps are slightly different, almost the same for a sender or a receiver. So first thing that both sender and receiver need to do is just identify just for data, and where's your, they call this generator as well. This is the one that's used to generate the CRC. Somebody asked me to execute this CRC, say, okay, where's that generator? A number, that's the generator there. And where's the data? There it is, we can identify. Second thing you need to do, insert or append zero to data. So the data you need to add zeros at the very end of data, at the end, this end here, we need to put zeros, one zero or two or three or four or five. How many zeros? One zero less than the length of the generator. 
So this one, the length of this generator, how many bits? Three, then we need to insert two zeros. So basically here we need to add or insert, append two zeros to the frame. If the generator was seven, then you, need, you must insert six zeros. So this is an important step. And this is only done at the sender end, but sometimes done at the receiver. Now, third step, start division, divide. Right? It's a long division. But guys, just to remind you, it's not really division. It's X or in. You know what an XOR is? XOR operation, do you know the XOR? No? You know the AND or OR operation? Logical operation, do you know them? Have you heard of them? Yes. Yeah? <laughs> Are you sure you did third year and second year of computer science? First year, even. Okay. Very quickly, right? I'll explain the OR. OR function. If you take two switches, two values, A and B, two switches, and they both can be off, or one of them off and the other one on, all different possibilities, or both on. Now we're going to do A. Or, this is the OR table. <coughs> Excuse me. Two switches. If you switch A or B, the light will come on. So, what value will come out here? Will the light be on the first light? No, it's... So, them are zero, so no light. This one here, B is on. So, that'll be if the light is on, and this one is on. Or, either B or on, both of them are on, so the light is on. So, that's called the OR table. And that's similarly the AND table. The conditions that both of them must be on in, in order for the light to come on. But this one says OR. Now, XOR is known as exclusive. X is short for exclusive R. Exclusive R, that means only one of, one of the switches can be on, not the two of them. So it works if, as long as one of the switches is on, but not the two of them. So, in the top one, both of them are off. The light. This one here, B is on, so the light comes on. This one, A is on and B is off, that's the light on. And this one, both of them are on, the light will go off. That's what we mean by ex exclusive. And that's what happens. In fact, computers, when they want to do division, they do a lot of exclusive. Or is that, is that, Logical operations like the exclusive, not those these functions that computers are really great at, fast, extremely fast. Computers are not good at adding or subtracting. They just tell you computer can add quickly. They can't. This is what they can do. Logical operations can be done so fast. So if any program or algorithm, you're, you're comparing two algorithms, and one of them uses logical operations, that would be the faster one. Right, so now we're going to do division, but instead of division, remember, it is an X or. I'm going to leave the table here so you can remind me. So the long division, if you remember it, I don't know if you worry about it. This long number, we're going to divide it by this smaller number. And we are not interested in the results, we are interested in the remainder. And the result of that is either going to be a zero or one. So, start with one. And one times one of one, we're always going to write one of one at the bottom. Now, and usually long division is subtract, but this is where you do the XOR. One XOR with one. I have the table here. If the two of them are ones, then the result should be zero. If they are different, this is an easy way to remember. This is the way how I remember it. If they are different, it's one. If they are the same, it's zero. So I'm going to hear one and zero. That's one, they're different. So now we have the result of one, one, zero, divided by one, zero, one. At the end, it gives us zero, one, one. Now, get rid of the zeros on the left. They mix you up if you leave them. We don't want any zeros on the left. Now, in order to continue division, 
you must have at least the same length. You cannot divide a digit that only has less digits by one that has longer digits. So we need to bring down the next bit in line. That's one, one, one. Now, divide. Now we have three bits here, we have three bits. If this was five bits, then we need to bring down more. Now we have three bits divided by that again. You don't have to write even the number there. Just write down one, zero, one. Now, who's going to help me? Yo, over there, please. What's the result there? Yeah, at the very back, yeah. Yeah. Come on, what will I write here? What's one exclusive one? There it is, the table there. If they are similar, it's zero. If they're different, the result is one. So one and one, the result of that? Zero. Say zero, yeah. The one zero? One and zero, one, one? Uh, zero. zero. Thank you. And we get rid of the zero on the left. And you keep going until you finish. So now I bring down the next one. It's zero. I down again. Bring So so basically, you just bring in the 101 there. Bring it there. Bring it down there. Just make sure you have enough bits, the same bits. So 101. One. Keep going. Quick. Please. Zero. 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 And one. one. Thank you. Get rid of the zeros on the left. This time I'm getting rid of two zeros. Go on, go on. Bring down this one and bring down this zero. Go on, hurry up again. Follow up. Zero. Zero. What's happening to you? One XOR with one. It's, it's a zero. If they're similar, it's a zero. And if they're different, it's one. So it's going to be. Okay, Are you, can you see this? Okay, get rid of this zero and bring in the next bit. This is the last bit it's coming down. So we're almost finished. Now we put one zero one here and the result is? Zero one one. Good. We finished division. Now we get rid of this zero and we don't have more to bring down this is shorter than the generator then we finished the operation now this is the remainder this is called the remainder so whatever this number is in fact if you take this decimal number you know the value the decimal value of this number divided by the decimal number of this value which is five you'll actually get a remainder of the, the decimal value of this number, which is three, whatever it is. Probably the number is 28 divided by five. It'll give you five, but the remainder is three. So it works whether it's a decimal number or a binary number. This is the actual remainder. Now, what do we do? This is the remainder that we will send with the frame. Remember from before. And in binary, the good thing, the remainder is the same as the complement. Binary, in binary, it's either one or zero, so they complement each other. So whatever you get here is the, is the remainder, but it's also the complement that goes. So we don't have to, remember earlier on, we found a number, what would take to divide it again? No, that's what it takes, those two numbers. So that's it. The last step, take the data and append the remainder to it. So the original data is one one zero one zero one and we have to append to it as many bits as the remainder this remainder could be zero zero one append the same number of bits that we put there so if it's one fill it with zero but now we already have two ones so basically that's the remainder going there so now the message that we'll end up sing, sending is one one Zero one, zero one. That's the data, and this is the what we call the CRC, the extra bits that gets transmitted. And now, if the receiver takes this frame and divides it by one zero one, then they should get a remainder zero. This is what the sender does. 
with these are the four instructions of how to do it, the four steps. You need to be able to do it. We'll, we'll have a quick example after this. So let me go through this the, as a receiver. Now the receiver receives this message. Imagine I'm going to write the message as it is. One, zero, one, zero, triple one. And we know the generator, the agreed generator is 101. They must have the same number there. So now this frame is going to be divided by 101. And we should have a zero remainder if there's nothing wrong. Does it really work? We'll see. The moment you are given a frame and you are given the generator, then you could tell which part of the frame is really the user data and which part of it is the CRC, the extra bits that need to be removed. Do you know? Do you know any way of knowing or finding out which of this data that I have, the long data there, one one zero one zero triple one, which part of it is the user data, which part of it is the redundant data, the CFC? You look at the generator, and it's the last two, the last bits, the length of the generator minus one, those bits are not part of the user data. Then you finish get rid of it. If our generator was seven, then you're gonna get rid of the last six bits. If our generator is 12, then you have to get rid of the 11 bit bits, right? But let's see how does the receiver. So now we're, we're doing the steps of the receiver. Step number one, make sure you have the correct frame, CFC and the generator. So just identify it. This is just an unnecessary step, but it's good for you to know that there's a generator. So identify the data and the generator. That's, this is the received data, that's the generator. You should also now identify that these two bits really are not part of the data. We just, we have them, but we know they are not part of the data. Why two bits? Because our generator has three bits. It's always one less than the generator. Now, let's do the divide operation. Remember here, I'm going to write another step. Many students make this mistake. They append zeros. Only you append zeros in the, in the, when, if you are a sender. If you are a receiver, I'm just going to write it. Do not append zero. Many students make a mistake and they do append a zero. If you are a receiver, no appending, append it. You already have extra data. You don't need to add any more. Now, third bit, divide. Of course, you know it's not division, right? What is it? It's XORing. So, who's going to help me there? Somebody who has not been. You want to do the XOR for me, please? Okay, zero, one, one. Thank you. And then get rid of this bit. Okay. My advice get rid of the zeros on the left. One, two, three zeros on the left, get rid of them. If they get into the operation, you make a mistake and kind of end up getting the wrong result. Right, so I'm gonna bring, how many bits will I bring down? One. Just one bit, because we have now the same number. Right, I'll put one zero one here and XOR again. Zero one zero. Perfect, get rid of the zero on the left. How many bits will I bring down? One. Yeah, so it's one zero one. Uh, zero zero one. Perfect, now how many bits will I bring down? Uh, two. <coughs> two bits, see? we. We only have one bit here. So we bring those two bits. My advice again, if you're doing it on paper, mark and bring, mark the bits you brought down because you end up bringing the same bit twice or and it can be very, you get the wrong result. So we have one, one, one. So we put one, zero, one, and the result is? Uh, zero, one, zero. Yeah, get rid of this zero. Bring down the, the last one. Two. Zero, zero, zero. As you can see here, the complemented, that complement made this number divides without any remainder. So that's the last step. Remainder does not equal zero, then there is an error. If the remainder is not zero, then there's definite error. Throw away the frame. Else, if 
remainder equals zero. What does it mean? You almost say there is no error, but don't say that because there's a probability of, you know, the correctness or certainty 99.999, but there is a probability of point oh, 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 001 that there may be an error. So we say more likely, don't say there's no error. You get, if you get this far in time, you say there is no error, you don't get the 10 out of 10, you get 9 out of 10. They most likely, or something to that effect, no error. And if you get any error, then you say definitely there is an error. So the error is definite. No error is most likely. Okay. And if, if we actually change any of these bits, it is zero, zero, zero. If it were for it. One quick example. I hope we get a good example. And I how to do it. I don't know if you can read it, but okay, so we have one, one, one is your generator and one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one. This is your data. Can you please generate the frame and the CRC with it that goes with it? Follow the center and the sender and give me what do you actually send? You send the same data? plus the remainder that you'll get. You have five minutes to do it. Can you do it? You have a piece of paper? Everybody has a piece of paper? Who doesn't have a piece of paper? We don't have a lot of it, so I'm gonna split it between. You have a pen? I get you a pen. What time is it over here? Are we? Huh? Okay. Uh, yeah, Thank you. Yeah, pen? Yeah, pen. Yeah, pen. Yeah, pen. Okay. All right, guys. Sorry, there's that. Somebody has pointed out this should be a zero, the last one. I hope this solves it. Sorry. Okay, you haven't really reached that far, have you? So I didn't waste any of your time. So that one is a zero. So one double zero, one double zero one. Who has finished? But these are the steps. Identify your data, that's your data, that's your generator. Append zeros to the to the data. Anybody have any issue? Put your hand up, I'll come and show you how to start. You okay? Okay, sorry, I don't see. It. You need to know how to do this. Get the remainder? Yeah. 
But going, you know, but just have a tiny bit of space so at least I know which one is your famous one. Okay, I'm not finished. You still have three bits. Put down the next one. No. Zeros. But you, you didn't do step number two. Append two zeros. See, guys, these are the steps. Then append two zeros to this end of the data. And then start the division. Anybody nearly finished? No, continue with the same one. You don't Yeah, yeah, just have two zeros and bring them start. Now make sure you delete zeros on the left. Don't use them again. They cause you, they give you wrong results. If you have a zero on the left in the any result, just cross it off so you know how many bits you have. This is a guarantee. Each at the end of that year, at the end of that year, the other ones are what is the Very quick. Most of you have done, yeah? And the remainder, okay, this is the way it is. I'm going to do the receiver now if, if, if you have not finished this. First, identify your data. That's my data, that's my generator. That's clear. And you need to know how long is your generator. It's three bits. Append zeros. You have to put zeros here on the right side of the bit of the data. How many zeros? One less than the length of the generator. There are other ways to work it out, but this is a quick, easy way to remember. So if our generator is three bits, of, remember, the generator could have more zeros on the right. They count as bits. If there are zeros on the left, in fact, the generator cannot store end with a zero. It must be one at both ends. Now, I'm going to append two zeros, because that's there are three here, so I'm going to append two zeros. But this is really my data here. Now, I'm going to start the division operation. You got to do it fast. One, one, one. No, some people didn't work it out. You follow, you tell me now what's the result there, okay? Yeah. Tell me again. Zero, one, one. Now, it's a good idea to cross this zero, or it can cause you problems. How many bits will I bring down? You're my guide. Keep wow. staying with me for a few minutes. So bring down one bit. Now I have the same length as the generator. So bring it down. One, one, one. Is this the way it works? Yes. yes. Okay. Zero, zero, zero. So out. Cross. The... How many bits will I bring down? Three. I'll bring down that zero, that zero, and one. Shall I stop here? No. No, because the zeros and the are no good. I need to have three bits. But the left bit must be a one. So keep going down. Now I have three bits. One, one, one. Zero. Zero, one, one. That's it. 
this is finished. No more the same length as the generator. So we, I stop at this point. So this is my remainder. Now, to send it, we have to take the original data. It's your responsibility now to know where the original data is. Like in the final exam, in a, in a question, you put down the data and say, this is the data, the frame, or the packet. That's it. Now we're going to append to it the remainder. The remainder can be 1, 1, can be 0, 1, 1, depends on the length of the generator. If this generator was 5, for argument's sake, if this was 5 and I got remainder 1, 1, how much will I add here? What will I add? Guys, if, if the generator was 5 bits, 5 bits, and I don't division operation at the end, I finished with I'm going to add a few bits here. That's remainder needs to go there. What value will it go there? One. 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 Zero. 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 One. 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 Zero. Zero. One. 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 The number of bits to be added, if the generator was five, then you must add four. One, one, turn, them, turn it into four bits without changing the value, so it goes into zero, zero, one, one. Don't put zero, zeros on the right hand side, that's a different number. Okay, so be careful with this. You might end up with the generator here, one, just one, but you have to add two. You have to put a zero, fill, pack it up with zeros on the left hand side. But for now, that's all we have to add is one one because that's all we have and we only need to add two bits so no more and this will be your final answer this is the last bit now take this bit this frame this is your last exercise for today before the weekend right so this is the same information that we are sending time i'm gonna flip one or two of the bits without you knowing which one or maybe i will not flip any of the bits so i'm gonna rewrite the same number maybe with slight changes this is the information this is the frame we are sending and the generator is one 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 is there an error in this frame can you please run the receiver and tell me there is or there is not an error in this frame. That's the kind of exam question you might get. You get this message, this frame, and you receive the, and this generator. But you're after receiving this frame. Does it contain an error? So now you should tell me if it contains an error. Where's the flipping receiver instruction? I thought I wrote them there, here they are. Here's the receiver instructions. Identify the data generator. We have them. So don't go and add zero. Tell me, is there an error in this message or not? I don't know if I have a, a spare pen. I have markers, but it's another marker. Thank you.